We're going to be playing as Jodwiga. I, I, you know what I should have done before starting this? See, as a mark of professionalism, I should have looked up how to pronounce Jodwiga over here, which is almost certainly, there's no way, I mean, there's like the Polish city that's like Lodz, right? L-O-D-S, and it's like, no, it's like Woods or something. You're like, oh, for crying out loud. <sighs> it's a good thing we're going to rename all the city names after Twitch subscribers, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to pronounce a single one ever. So, there we go. All right. Um, Jadwig over here is going to be the leader of Poland. Her ability is the Lithuanian Union, um, which is kind of funky. It actually has, like, basically three different sub-things, um, and, and they're religiously tied for her unique ability, which is different from Poland's unique ability, so we'll look at that in a moment. Um, but one of the things that Poland can do is it's the only thing in the game that can steal tiles from someone else. Um, if you build a uh, an encampment or a fort, it automatically grabs all the tiles around it, including foreign tiles, and flips them to you. As far as I can tell, I believe this will not steal tiles with wonders and districts, I think. Think it won't steal those tiles, um, but other than that, I believe it will steal uh, tiles that way. And if uh, if I have a if I have a religion that I founded, then I can also um, convert cities doing that, which is kind of interesting. Um, it this next line is kind of ambiguous to me. Holy sites gain standard faith adjacency bonus from adjacent districts. So you're just telling me that holy sites get the same standard adjacency bonus as is standard for all holy sites. That's not what it means. That you actually get a bigger adjacency bonus than normal. But it sounds like Holy Sites just get the standard bonus. They don't get the... Ooh, another tip came in. They don't get the standard bonus. They get a better bonus. Also, relics get bonus stuff if we can start generating relics. So, Jadwiga by herself kind of has a religious -y kind of uh, tone to it. And apparently, the AI Jadwiga plays kind of religious -y and maybe a little bit more passive. Apparently, AI Poland is relatively uh, easy to deal with, but I think it's going to be very different in the hands of a player. Let's see what that tip was. Who dat? A flame beard! Thank you very much! A bottle of good Polish vodka to start the new year. Nazdrowia Tavaric. Oh! I have some up. There's some vodka in the house. I don't know if it's Polish, though, but I should. What is it? The, um, uh, the Lud... Lud... Whatever it is. People say in Poland they do, like, vodka and apple juice, which I've never tried still. And now we got, I got a, 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 a donation in from, from Woods, which actually, I'm surprised that the, uh, the, the letters actually rendered correctly over here in, uh, in the stream, which is kind of awesome. Thank you very much, and the heart, heart back to you. All right. Poland. Golden Liberty is Poland's unique ability, which is the ability to culture bomb, as we mentioned, which will be quite of interesting. Also, and this is a, a very interesting, so there's quite a few sieves that start with an extra policy slot. Poland does not start with an extra policy slot, but one of Poland's military policies gets converted to a wild card slot instead. So not quite as strong as... Is it Greece that starts with a free wildcard slot? Not quite as strong, but still quite nice. Um, because obviously you can still use the wildcard slot for a military policy, but you can use it for anything else, including like great people points and things like that. So that's quite cool. I like that. Um, also, it means, because normally until you get your upgraded government, like your, your first you know, set of the governments with the um, three slots or whatever, you don't get a wild card slot until then. So that means as soon as we get Code of Laws, we're going to get a wild card slot, which means assuming we've, um, we unlock the appropriate stuff afterwards, we'll be able to start generating great people points of some kind. So it'll be something to consider. Um, special unit over here is the Winged Hussar, which upgrade replaces... Does it replace something? I mean, upgrades to tank. Unique modern medieval era unit. It pushes units back, which is quite neat. Units that can't retreat get damage. It moves quickly. It's a heavy cavalry class, moves quickly. It's got a lot of melee strength. Huh. Interesting. Um, so that's the winged hussar, and I want to go back over here. Also, we've got a special infrastructure. This is a, um, a unique building. Um, does not, it replaces the market, so it's not a district, it's not a unique district, just an upgraded version of the market, uh, which gives more bonus from trade routes, whether those are international trade routes or domestic one, they give a slightly different, uh, thing, which is quite cool, and we're gonna try to do a lot of trade routes here. Of course, in the winter update, 
Um, one of the big changes there is you can no longer get the bonus from multiple overlapping um, districts, like factories that give production bonuses. Um, you only get the bonus from one of them. So if, you're, if your city is covered by multiple factories, you don't get like a whole bunch of bonus uh, production. Same thing with um, like arenas or whatever that give the plus one amenities, they no longer stack. So a big nerf to districts that way. They did go and reduce the cost of building wonders and space race stuff, which is good because, or like especially the late game ones, which is good because you're going to have less production. They didn't change the cost of building districts, which I still think is too high in the late game. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, uh, technology costs are increased, uh, as especially in the late game, so things are going to get slowed down there as well. Of course, we're also going to be playing on epic speed, so it's going to check things out a bit. Check if it replaced the knight by checking to see if you can build the knight in the tech tree. All right, that's a good idea. Knigget. Stirps. No, nope, still have the knight in there. Um, uh, sorry. Flying, flying, oh, I spelled it wrong, but, oh, the search is not finding the, um, my unique unit, which is interesting, cavalry, there's the tank, no, I don't want to research, upgrades to helicopter from horsemen, Oh, it's in the cultural tree! Really? Now that's quite interesting. No kidding. I think it's the mercenaries tech is what they said, right? There it is, right over here. Huh. Okay. Mercenary civic is required for that. The mercenary civic is quite good. It's the one that gives you the discount on upgrades as well. It's not that far down the tree, so we're going to get access to this relatively early. Um, there, I, This might give us incentive for trying to get heavier culture as opposed to heavier science. Also, this doesn't require any horses or anything, right? So it requires no resources. That's quite interesting. Anyway, that all comes later. Let's play the early game here. Um... So, the early game is going to play, I mean, sort of not particularly relevant to what civilization we're playing in this particular situation. We are on Deity. This start looks pretty decent. Uh, obviously, we're going to have fresh water because we are on a, a lake over here. Oh, it's interesting. It doesn't automatically set the um, the settler lands on our first, our first go. But lots of fresh water, obviously. Uh, we could move around. I could move the, uh, the warrior first, which seems like an idea. I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the west. Just to see, we got sheeps. I don't think there's any reason to move. Um, where we are now, we're going to be able to work a four production tile over here. Another four production tile here on the burners. Um, the uh, the cattle will give us three food early on, which is quite nice and can be upgraded quite early on. Um, we've got one rock. We've got some marble over there. Maybe stone circles for a... Um... <laughs> Shut up about the Petra. <laughs> no! No! So anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and settle in place. I like it. Boop! Okay. But instead of Krakow, or however it's supposed to be properly pronounced, uh, we are going to randomize the list of subscribers, and our city name is going to be Nabate, Nabates, or Nabates. I don't know how people would prefer to say it. I kind of like Nabates. I don't know why. But we're going to have that. Now, production-wise, I would love to go with something like Scout, Monument, Builder, or something like that. Except we're playing on Deity, so we have to start with the Slinger. Bar none. We have to start with the Slinger, because there's going to be Barbarians, like, right at the start of the game. We're going to have to get the, a kill with the Slinger, so that we can get a boost towards Archery, so we can get Archery, so we can get Archers, and not die to A, Barbarians, and B, the Psycho AIs that are going to be around us, for sure. We gotta start with the Slinger. Almost certainly we'll go with the Scout second. Um, and then, probably after that, we'll go with the Settler, actually. So, very, very, very early on. Bum, bum, bum. So we got that. Uh, Tech-wise, um, I, I tend... I mean, obviously, we're going to start with one of these. No reason to rush sailing or astrology. Although, astrology could get us a very early shrine if we want to found a religion. Normally, I like starting with animal husbandry. That way, we can research archery very, very, very early on. If we want to found a religion, 
the shrine is nice. And we do have sort of... Well, I mean, we only have one thing that's sort of like pro-founding a religion, which is um, we might be able to convert a city if we do a culture bomb. But that's a lot of ifs. I don't expect that'll come up very often. I don't feel like we need to work on getting a religion. It's deity level. It's often extraordinarily hard for us to get our own religion. Remember, the AI starts with four free technologies here. Most likely, they're going to start with astrology already. They also start with uh, three settlers, so they're going to have tons of location. The uh, Stonehenge is going to go ridiculously quickly. So, we could build stone hands because we do have access to stone. If we were lower difficulty, I would be very tempting, tempted to do that. But on Deity, it's almost certain that one of the AIs will have access to stone very early on. They'll already have astrology, so they won't have to spend 27 turns or whatever researching astrology. Um, and they get like a 40% boost to production, so they're going to be able to beat us to it. So I'm going to take the safe strat. I'm going to go Animal Husbandry. Uh, get ready to pick up Archery at some point. Um, maybe go Early Riding as well. well. We'll figure that out. Although my capital here without any mountains, actually doesn't have a strong location for a holy site or anything like that. I guess it does have a strong location for a, um, uh, uh, uh stone hands, but yeah, we're gonna get crushed to it. So, no. I'm gonna go safe strat today. Unpust! Thank you very much for the resub! Almost to two years! Petra Henge! <laughs> um, I don't want to go too far from my capital, because I'm worried about barbarians early on, but I think I'm gonna go and spend one more turn looking out to the west over here, and actually find... A very no nice location, maybe, for another city here. We've got marble, this is very marvelous, um, and mountains as well. So probably what I'll do in our next turn is move north. Maybe maybe move this way and then come back around over here. The mountains are also uh, potentially a nice uh, choke point for defending against things. I didn't verify what tile it's working. Okay, it's working that tile, as expected, which is going to be perfectly fine. So yeah, I'm going to go through here. Oh, a goodie hut! And a river, and two more rocks! Whoa, this rocks. Mm hmm Freddy Firecaster coming in with a three-year resub! Hey, Freddy! Oh, uh, and Gorash right before that at 37 months as well. I know we're going to miss a lot of these resubs. Because we haven't streamed for a while, there's going to be a real flood of them in here, so... Um, I apologize if I do miss a bunch, but... Sorry, we gotta play. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to pick up the goodie hut. I guess I'll go this way, although... How bad is this? Hojo, this early on? It's an honor to meet you. We'd love to sample your hospitality. We get a Eureka towards writing. And a Eureka towards sailing from the Goody Hut. And more st Four stone over here! I mean, to me, this is like... Right here. I don't know if we'll get it. Um, With all this, I don't remember if they've got an icon, a good icon for just like a city. If all the district ones... City center, there we go. Hmm. I don't know if we can beat into it. That being said, if we could, the river would provide good cover. There's a mountain here, a mountain here. Sometimes mountain ranges tend to, like, extend and things like that. This might even be a more of a narrow choke point than we think. Um, it actually might be incredibly easy to defend against Japan. Of course, again, they start with a total of three settlers, right? As opposed to my one. So, I, I don't know what they're going to decide to do with that, but... Uh, I don't think I'm going to move west at this point. I really feel like I've got to move my warrior closer to home because we're going to have a barbarian any second now. So I'm going to do that. More stone! Huh. Cheap location, quite good. Stone, marble. Huh. Yeah, plus two fifth and quarters from Pantheon. Yeah, exactly. Stone circles. Uh, it would be very nice to get that. Um, we can get more movement if I go up this way, but I'm worried that it's just taking me further away from my city. Alright, one more. Maybe we'll find a goodie hut. Oh, we did find Valletta, and we probably met them first. We did, so we got a free envoy. They are, um, they are a military city-state, so we just get a plus two production when producing units. Um, which the slinger should definitely count as that, so hopefully that'll be a bit of a boost to our production rates. Mm-hmm. What tile's gonna go next? Really? I would much prefer if you went to the bananas next. Why are you gonna grab that? Because of all the money. That's actually very annoying. Also, I do need to make a couple of changes here. I want to not show the yield icons. Also, in the um, the Chaos Quick UI 
I want to make sure that the pop-ups for the techs and civics are turned on. Mostly because if I don't have that on, I'm going to forget when we get a new civic, and I won't remember to change our government. I mean, I already forget a fair amount, so. Okay, we definitely want to go... That works out very nice. First of all, there's another goodie hut there, although we may not get it. But finding this barbarian encampment is great. They may have sent the scout down this way. Or they might have sent one north. Either way, I'm, I'm worried that this is going to start spawning a million units. But our slinger might come in in the right time to go and kill the spearmen. We're going to see how that goes. We got a tip in. That's not the window I want. This is the window I want. Uh, oh, we got one from Petra or Bust. The desert in the southwest is perfect for Petra. Well, thank you very much for that tip. Um, got, we are going to have to look at the desert and see what's what. We also got one in from Fock. Hey! Hey, Quillet, is Sunday Morning Heroes back this week as well? Well, Briarstone should be back home for this Sunday, whether or not um, he'll be prepped for the adventure. We'll have to see. I will try to let you know. I'd say there's probably like an 80% chance that there will be Sunday Morning Heroes on Sunday, but that's just, it really is just a guess at this point. Um, over here, is there any way, if I lock over to the food, no, okay, so... I was just going to check to see if that was going to bring down the, um, if the, if the production of the Slinger would still be two turns, but it's still, it would go from two to three, which I don't want. I want the Slinger early. Mm -hmm. I do have the Viking, uh, DLC, actually. I have all the DLCs. So, I'm going to pop this. We get a boost towards the wheel. That's very nice. How would you normally get the Eureka for the wheel? Minor resource. Okay, so, most likely we would have gotten that anyway. Although I say that. It's minor resource, not quarry a resource. Uh, unless we build a city here and get copper, unless we discover that there's iron within our capital or something like that, we may not have gotten the wheel, Eureka. So you're going to move up there, and you are going to make your way over here. You better be the scout for this camp. If you're the scout for another camp, I will be kind of salty. Okay. Um, you are starting on the scout, which I think is fine and what we want at this point. Um, you're going to grow in a turn, so I'm not going to mess around with your, your production. How much money do we have? Can I buy the bananas? Because that's really what I would like to work on my next tile. Uh, we may as well go and smack this guy. That's fine. I don't think we got the exclamation mark that that guy spotted us, which is kind of interesting. No. So he's not running back to a camp for anything. Yeah, see, it auto-expanded over there. Um, in 18 turns, so I need 75 gold. So in maybe two turns, I'll probably try to buy the bananas and work that. My second pop is going to work here for the extra production. I think I would rather do the growth. So yeah, let's, uh, let's work these two tiles to grow a little bit faster. Uh, as opposed to getting the production here. I think that's going to be fine. So you go ahead and fortify until healed. You are going to keep working your way over here, which is going to be fine and dandy. More rock over there. Do you want a rock? Ha! Okay. Um, I probably can if leave the goody hut there for now. It, then when I die, I want to go where they went. God, I love that quote. And man, this voice actor. Um... I think I'm going to start working towards archery, because I suspect we'll be able to get this kill quite early. Now, I wonder, can we damage him enough to get him within kill range? Looks like the answer is no. I do need to damage him in such a way that he doesn't kill my slinger, though. Well, I'm going to start by bombarding him once. And if I do this, I will not kill him, and almost certainly he won't suicide. But I can't guarantee that. And it's possible if he attacks the Slinger now, he'll actually kill it. So I gotta do this. I'm really hoping we can kill him with the Slinger. Please don't suicide. Just run back to your camp. Thank you. So now, if I go here and shoot him, decisive victory. Bam! Gives us the Eureka towards archery. Wonderful. We're gonna go clear the encampment, which is gonna give us another Eureka towards military tradition. And give us money, uh, which means we can purchase our Bernerners. Ermagerd Bernerners. So yeah, we'll definitely want to work that. I mean, I don't I don't have to keep these locked. It's going to work that automatically. So get a little bit more food, more production. We're getting our first scout in a moment. Um, after the scout, I'm pretty sure we're going to go settler, actually. Um, a lot of people have been looking at this stuff, and it feels like going really early settler is actually super duper strong. Spain, huh? 
Where do we see the Spain the Spaniard? I don't see the Spaniard. He must have just clipped one of our cities. He's probably to the south of us, I assume. Unless he popped in here for a sec, but it seems a bit unlikely. Did you just give us a free scout on the turn that we finished a scout? I'm okay with that. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think an early settler will be quite good. We may go and just try to ninja the spot as early as possible, which might mean an early war against Japan, which is not great, but tis what it tis. After that, we'll likely build two archers. Um, actually, after this, we'll probably go builder into two archers. Uh, I've got to heal the warrior. It'd be easier to heal him in friendly territory. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to park him over here. And the Slinger, I'm going to bring you into here to be upgraded once that happens. Um, so, we're going to get one scout to go south. And the other scout is going to go... Over here. That sounds fine. Spain is to the north. Uh, J. Corcoran Cor says. Okay, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's go this way. More stone and a river down here. And some copper. Very good. Actually, I'm actually thinking... Ooh, I was going to say, maybe this scout should actually go down here. And I think that's actually what I want to do. Um, right. You are still buzzing around here. see if we can't eliminate you. I suspect he was from the camp over here, so I don't think he can alert anything, but... Oh, there's Spain! Well, there's the Spanish warrior. We still don't know where the capital is. Scout can't move two towns everywhere, uh, no matter what. Uh, no, the scout in, um, in Civ 6 has three movement, but no special discount on movement. Honestly, if I can keep this guy pinned in so we can kill him. Let's go this way. Okay, so Spain is definitely to the south. Now, uh, one of the things with the, the mod that I'm running, um, it, which is just a UI mod, uh, CQ UI, adds a lot of extra information, um, it minimizes some of the clicks, it's very, very handy. It's also got a really improved little leader screen over here that gives you information that was always sort of publicly available through different things, through like trading and, and checking some of the info panels and things like that. Um, like... Um, the score, for example, if we mouse over Spain, uh, or show details over here, right? We can get a breakdown of, of all kinds of different things. Um, it, it might be giving me more information I, I, I actually than in the base game, but one of the most important things is it does give you the military strength over here, um, which I can't remember if there's a way to get that in, in Vanilla Civ 6. In Vanilla Civ 5, you could very easily. Um, but anyway, you can see exactly how strong the AI starts, right? Like, their score, the first number is their score, um, which is just crushing us, because they get to start with so many cities, and they also have, like, triple our military strength, which is terrifying! But, that's one of the reasons that we do rush archery. Because, if you got archery, and if you can get yourself up to two or three archers, uh, you can pretty much win any early game war against the AI. Ah, uh, no, another scout! Now... Almost certainly I can't kill him. I will go ahead and attack for the XP, though. Uh, so he's already seen our borders over here. Alright. Uh, I could declare on war and try to steal the builder, but then I think we would just get our butt kicked. So we're going to come over here and here and see what's what. That is a lot of desert, y'all. If only there was a wonder we could build that would really take advantage of the desert. Too bad it doesn't exist. Checking domination victory shows military strength. Aha! Does it? Like, there was a way... There's a place somewhere. There's a place somewhere that gives you some of that. Or is it, like... I don't remember. Anywho. We're not going to send a delegation to these guys. Actually, I'm wondering about sending a delegation to... Um, to Japan... We might be able to keep them friendly. At his best, man is the noblest of all animals. 
Separated from law and justice. It's an overall under military. All right, here's code of laws. Um, so we've got our government, and yeah, we've got our wild card policy over here. We are. I think we're going to take God King so we can get our um, Stone Circles Pantheon, which would be amazing for us. And I think we're going to pick up Discipline to fight Barbarians, because it's quite early on. It's still going to be really powerful. Although there's something to be said about throwing Urban Planning down there for the bonus to production. But I think there's going to be some more Barbarian Warfare, so I'm going to go ahead with this. I mean, at the very least, we're going to try to bop some of these guys. Ah! So, world ranking overall, and then you mouse over a sieve you know, and it tells you their military strength there. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, actually, I don't. I was never aware of that, so... That seems like the good thing to know. Alright, we're going to start with foreign trade over here, with Ferengi trade, because um, with two scouts, there's a good chance we'll find our second continent early. Again, it'll be second continent as part of our main landmass over here, uh, and unlock the, uh, the ability to, um, to build trade routes, which will be quite nice. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be able to chase down that Barbarian. I'm just going to go ahead and fortify you. Um, I think this guy will move forward a bit more here. Oh, there he is. Well, I've already lost the movement, which is too bad because I could have actually attacked him. Most likely I won't get the kill, but that's okay. I don't actually need to kill him. Do I want to go and duke it out with this scout? I think I do, actually. Here and there, we're four turns towards archery. And yeah, I'm still going to move you here, and then wait here, and then once you're an archer, I'll probably scout the coast. I think that's going to be fine. You're still growing. You've got that going on. Okay, next turn. Yeah, I could have killed him. Not that it matters that much. But he just annoys... His presence annoys me. Um, Interesting decision. I won't be able to shoot you this turn. I mean, I suppose I could kill him within the borders of Kyoto, but what's the point, right? I'm going to go into here. Oh! <sighs> so this is a complete wall over here. I think the military strength is also shown on the little uh, Civ flag top right, the little sword icon. Well, yeah, it is, but this is part of the mod. I, say, I was saying, like, we can see their military strength here, and I was, I was saying, I was pretty sure this is something we already had access to, I just couldn't remember where. I don't think this mod is showing us anything we don't already know. Um, which actually makes me wonder, could we find out about their tech? We could find out about people's science rate? Unless, again, that's another part of the mod, but... Dang. Oh, here come the nukes! Nuke, nuke, nuke. Yeah, that will be a great campus. So, there's not even a resource there to step over. Holy crap. Or holy site. I mean, either way. And and then the other one, well, no, we wouldn't want to overwrite the stone. Here's a good spot for another one, though, because it's triple adjacency. Where's, um... I don't see the unit. No idea. Alright, you go ahead and just uh, rest before we send you out again. That's going to be fine. Yeah, you have spotted something. Oops. So, I'm going to wake up my warriors here and try to go for a bit of the cutoff. Oh, no! Now I can't sling them. Uh, how many turns to archery? Two turns. Yeah, I'll just leave you here, because there's no way I'm going to be able to catch this scout and sling him. AI forward settling. You know, this can be a nice city for us to take. What do we think? Sure. Good job, Spain. Well, now we know what our early game is going to be. Kill Philip. I won't be able to do it. Yeah, I guess not, huh? Archery, one turn. See, so, yeah, I just wait. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth. I knew not where. Upgrade. <laughs> 